we're back with another episode of All the Mods 9. You guys can probably tell right off of the bat that uh, this is a new mic, and I'm trying out some different some different methodologies of recording sound. If things get a little bit wonky or a little bit better in the post-production, that's why it's me experimenting with some stuff. Always trying to get better, always trying to refine the process a little bit to make it easier, and then you don't need me to better you guys up. You guys are already better. We're going to go ahead and jump right into it. I have an itinerary, but I'm not going to give you a sneak peek yet because I don't know all that we're going to get to. Just kidding. I'm going to show you guys anyway. There's a very, very exceptionally low chance that this all gets done in one episode. But, you know, we're going to try. We're going to go ahead and see what we can get done. And I, as I was testing with the audio and recording some stuff earlier just to make sure that everything was sort of working together as intended uh, i went and made some supplies and you can guess what that probably links up for in the itinerary that's number four the steam engine that steam engine is going to be pretty heavy on the resource grinding pretty heavy on the building so we're going to save that until maybe just like maybe a couple minutes in let's go ahead and start with ars nouveau ars nouveau is calling my name uh if you guys are unfamiliar with the ars nouveau mod don't worry i pretty much am too so as much as i would love to breeze through this a lot of this is going to be experimentation and a lot of trial and error learning things out for the first time we got this nice little book the worn notebook uh you make this with a lapis and a book and a, and a crafting recipe and i read through a little bit and as i was reading a thing came to mind if you look at the source there's a couple different ways to get this thing called source here we go, yes, generates a small amount of source from nearby mob death and animal breeding. And I thought, wow, we can generate source from this. I'm already standing here doing, well, I'm doing nothing right now. Hey, that lever's off. Somebody must have replaced it. We can get some source just off of these zombies that already spawn all the time from the spawner. Turn that bad boy back on. Yeah, that's right. And if we go back to our chest of goodies, we got a bunch of minecart contraptions. There's a lot of those mob spawners in the nether. A lot of nether structures will spawn with them. There was also a really special spawner that I found while I was exploring, and I just sort of yoinked all of them. There were four here, two spiders, a skeleton, and a zombie. I mean, we already had a zombie, and it's a duplicate spider, but for those of you that have played all the mods 9, you know how apotheosis work. <laughs> it's still got the torch stuck to it. But anyway, I just took this out of the contraption chest. Remember, we still got two spiders, so I'm going to go ahead and convert one of these to the chicken spawn egg. And if you don't know how to get the spawn eggs, there's a special way you do it with the GM chicken feed. I'll show you in a little bit but that's what we had that that liquid layer exp drain contraption over there for that's how i got this uh but we should be able to just do this right click and now it turns into a chicken spawner oh that's awesome and now we have infinite chickens this is for the apotheosis mod so if you go here click on this go to the spawner modification it'll show you what you need in order to modify this guy but if if, if you look at what it takes like piglet hearts we're, we're nowhere near piglet hearts. Gas tears. I mean, we can kind of get that one. All the modium ingots. This one requires unobtainium. This one requires a dragon egg. So basically what I'm saying is we're not going to be upgrading these spawners. We're just going to use them as vanilla, at least until a long way down the road when we have all these random ingots that it wants in order to upgrade spawners. Oh, immediate chicken. Now we'll take a quick break from that. One of my friends hopped on the server, so I was kind of just joking around with him for a little bit, and I got a couple clips from that that I want to show. You'll have to excuse the jarring difference in audio. I recorded these back before I changed out the mic. What you got for me? Come on, uh, let's do this somewhere open. I want it somewhere open. Uh, no, this is good. This is good. So first off, we're going to try it on the tree. All right. All right. Show me Stand show right me there. What you got. Uh -huh. Well, that was, I got to be honest with you. That was kind of rude. <laughs> That's the okay, so here's here's the exciting part of that spell. It doesn't just work on you. Check this out. It punches blocks. <laughs> it punches them and shoots them away. Did you litter in my yard? You litter in my yard? I don't know what you're talking about. There's a log right here. What, what log? But this one right here? Yes. Well, <laughs> Where did that send you? Where did you soon up? Did that send you to the ocean? <laughs> you sent me to the bottom of the river like a mafia member. You tied cinder blocks to my feet. Wait, I don't have the pole spell yet. <laughs> hey, look, see, I can push you in the river too. 
Oh, that's, <laughs> that's so cute. I punch you and your your socks meow. <laughs> it's because they're because they're cats. Just, they're actual. You have actual kitty cats on your feet. Yeah, look. You see? I thought they were your slippers. You're, this is animal endangerment. Or oh no, no, it. like they're they're cat slippers. <laughs> they're not actual cat. Jesus. Well, last no. I checked, cat slippers don't meow. Usually cats <laughs> meow. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what did Brian give me? What are these things? Maybe? You just give yourself a night vision. I did, yeah. <laughs> it's broad daylight! <laughs> where's the night? Where's the night vision you require? What can you see? I will send you to the Shadow Realm, Jimbo. Stay still, stay right there. Uh, he doesn't want to stay still. What do you mean he's up? There we go. <laughs> oh, God! I could give them feather falling or hover, you know? I don't know. Hold on. Let's try it. Oh, I guess you're immune in a boat. Wait, does it work on the boat? Oh. What yeah, it does. Where did you just launch that thing? Oh, I guess it doesn't work on mounted stuff. Yes, it does. <laughs> oh, right in the cage! Shot. <laughs> that's, that's your llama now. <laughs> that was a bank shot. He bounced off the wall. <laughs> I don't know if he despawns, but... Dude, if this is tier I'm one... so dumb! Be <laughs> <laughs> a wizard. Oh! Look at that. Your, bunny, <laughs> your bunny slippers are kicking in the air. You're like an anime guy. <laughs> it's the stupidest... I just have my little legs going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're dangling everywhere. All right, getting back on topic a little bit. I only wanted to use the chicken spawner to show you that it could be done. We don't really need it for the Vitalik Source Link, but let's go ahead and start crafting that up. In order to craft this Vitalik Source Link, we're going to need two Source Gems, gold, and a Glistening Melon. Two gold, Glistening Melon. And in order to make the Source Gem, we're going to need an Imbuement Chamber first. If you look in the recipe table... The Abuman Chamber can convert a block of Amethyst into a Source Gem block. I really don't know why, but we're gonna do it. That should be good for right now, and if I put you in there... And that's just gonna take a while, but we are gonna get our Source Gem block. And here we go, one Source Gem block, four Source Gems. One Vitalik Source Link right here. And the Source Jar that goes with it is pretty easy to make too, nothing special about that one. Not a fluid. And just a simple setup like this, it's not very pretty. Oh, there's a creeper in there. It's not very pretty, but the zombies are dying and it is filling up. Yeah, right there. You can see the particles kind of coming out. It's filling up the source jar. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing 100% right now. Oh, I got a potato. We're also going to need this novice spell book. It seems pretty simple to make. And there's the spell book. So what do we got in here? Invalid spell. Well, actually, you see, I meant to press V to quick select. Proceed to craft. Oh, that's... I had to proceed. It's a different crafting table. Okay. So we start out with, what, five glyphs that we know from the start? And if I'm looking at this right, the glyph we want for Silk Touch is Exchange. Hit as if they were mined with Silk Touch. So we want a block of emerald, two pearls, and the manipulation essence. We're going to need the scribes table for later on. On the scribes table, I maybe I just throw things. Do I just throw things there? There you go, there you go. And a button. Yes. Yes. All according to plan. Now I want to make this squiggles, so it needs the redstone clock and a button. And one source gem to complete it. No recipe found. Oh wow, you really gotta mash these things together, huh? Well, there you go. Problem fixed. And what? Can I put this over here? It's a little far away. Oh, it still got it. What? And it kept the... It didn't use the button? Wow. I really thought it would use that stuff up. Okay. Well, anyway, what do I... Can I just put this in the... Oh, look at that. You right-click on it now. This requires the squiggle essence, block of emerald, and two pearls. Well, that doesn't do anything. Hold on. I probably got something in my book. Oh, you have to put the spell book on the table. Okay. Okay, here we go. Select. Yes, please. Toss items as they appear above to complete the crafting. Oh, <laughs> it's floating like a halo right up there. Bam. Two of you guys and one of them. Ooh. Mm. 
Now that was fancy as heck. Unlocked exchange. All right. I just got to figure out how to put that spell on. So what I want projectile. Exchange is too powerful for your current spell book. Oh no. Well, it shouldn't be too hard to get the next tier. It is only one tier up. Blaze rods, block of quartzes, obsidian. I can get all those materials. Why? Why? While I was testing some stuff earlier, I went out and I got a blaze spawner from a nearby nether fortress. And bam, all right, all right. Turn it off so I won't spawn more, but this is how we're gonna get blaze rods. And upgrade. Nice. Now I can put this on, hopefully. Projectile exchange. And what do I do to cast that? Go outside and right click. Boom. Invalid spell. Boom. Well, I'm not a very smart man. Oh, I had to click create. There we go. Okay, bam. Now. Oh, look at that. It shows up in the wheel. Well, I got to be honest with you. It's not very impressive so far. Oh, do I have to have... I have to have blocks in my hotbar. Ah, uh, you know, okay. Assume that I only have grass in my hotbar. Oh, perfect. And you know what that means. It's time to go claim our beehive. are safely back home. I got a setup, a very simple setup, just so the honeycombs are being produced. This is something that we're gonna have to leave running in the background for a while. That is gonna mark two things done on our itinerary today. All right, I mentioned to build something. We're gonna have to build some sort of structure around the steam engine for sure, so I'd like to get started with that. We're gonna need to pick out an area for the steam engine to be, and I'm thinking over by the coast is probably a good idea. We can probably also tear down the old washer. After that, I started smelting up some materials to start laying the foundation. Grabbed our mining machine to make leveling an area very quick. And begun placing a bunch of blocks to act as the ground layer for our building. Somewhere on his travels, my friend Sheriff Jinji came across this amulet of mana boost. And he gave his spare one to me. It's counterpart with an amulet of mana regen. And you can craft this. It takes a lot of diamonds. He may have crafted this himself, to be honest with you. But I'm definitely going to put this sucker on. Okay, just one last thing before I get started building this factory. I need a lot more wood in order to build the cogs and everything for this. Uh, as you can see, I'm basically all out. This is where I've been keeping the wood I use for crafting. And we could use the hand crank and mechanical saw a little bit more, but I think I want to try something new. So we need to get the fell and amplify unlocked. Glyph of fell. This requires a diamond pickaxe. It requires an earth essence and a diamond axe. Toss in the items. I love the floating pickaxe. I love the floating things above the table animation. Bam! And we pick it up. Glyph of Amplify. And the other one is... We want Fell. Take your Earth Essence and your Diamond Axe. Alright, here we go. Bam! Bam! Okay, so I am using, in spell slot 2, it is Projectile, Fell, and Amplify. And if I just right click... Boom! The Amulet of Mana Boost really helps... Boom! Oh, it didn't break the whole tree. Well, that's okay. It's a lot better than hand cranking. Okay, guys. I've heard whisperings of a magic belt that lets you levitate. And by whisperings, I mean my friend directly told me about it. And it's called the Belt of Levitation. And it's pretty easy to make. It's only four gold ingots, three feathers, an air essence. And the air essence is pretty easy to make. We've already made the, the earth essence. For the felling tree, the felling spell, the only wild card is the wilding wing, which is dropped by wilden, which we can't get. I, I don't know how to spawn the wilden. I haven't found any. Nobody on the server has found any yet, so I'm not sure how to find the wilden wing, but we did just find the wilden wing like in a chest, so you don't have to get it from the mob drop, which is nice. So I'm going to go ahead and craft that belt up, and we're going to play around with it a little bit, see what it does. Make it a mundane belt. Oh, that's right. I need the enchanting apparatus, which is different than the... In the human chamber that I currently have. Oops. Chanting apparatus. We got the air essence. Then we needed an arcane core to go with the imbuement chamber. 
After that, we got our belt of levitation after a really fancy animation. Love this animation every time. Okay, I've done a bunch of testing on this belt. You just jump and hold shift, and it allows you to float a certain number of blocks above whatever block that you're underneath. And some blocks allow you to float more than others. But for the most part, like, about four or five is the cap. It seems like it'd be really helpful for early game exploration and building. So I'm probably going to use it for that quite a lot. Also, it's very floaty. It's, like, hard to make sharp turns. It is really tough to make sharp turns. Really, really tough. Alright, enough faffing around. It's time to get to the meat of the build. I'm just going to start putting stuff down and figure out a working model for the steam engine factory. And once I get things figured out, then I'll bring you guys back in and show you what I got. Okay, are you ready for the grand reveal? You hear a chuckle behind me. Alright, three, two, one, bam! Steam engine! Two of them, actually. So I'll give you a quick rundown. If you've seen the steam engine, you know how this thing works. Uh, but for those of you that haven't seen a steam engine before, we have some lava being generated up here via dripstones. And my calculations were correct earlier. This is enough lava cauldrons to support 18 blaze burners. We're pumping that into that big tank. It's coming out on the spigot and just filling up any empty buckets that come through. And then these mechanical arms, there's two of them, one for each steam engine. They are just collecting the buckets and they're using them on the blaze burners if they can. And the buckets just go through the cycle. And so these are generating 150k stress units per steam engine. So I've got two of them. That's more than enough for basically anything that we're going to be doing with Create. I highly doubt we're going to need anything more advanced than this. And then to power this all, it needs lots of water. Seven pumps on the intake into this tank. It needs six pumps coming out of this big tank in order to support all the water for these two boilers. And that seemed to keep it stable. I haven't made a kickstart for this yet, and to be honest, I don't really care. I spent a lot of time debugging this thing. I'll do a kickstart later when it comes back to bite me in the butt later on down the line. But for now, I want to start building. I want to get a frame around this thing and a building and something nice to look at. So get ready for a montage. <laughs>
it is, guys, the final product. We're going to go into Spectator real quick and just do a flyby so you can get an idea of what it looks like from all angles. Oh, I'm still at five. Oops. The first thing you're going to notice is that I went for this dried warped, warped block counterpart to that one. This is just for the green trees in the nether. It's a very bold, like, bluish green block. It's a very strong color choice, and I really like how it stands out. It really draws the eyes upwards to the rest of the build. And I'm a big fan of very strong, bold colors. I don't really like my gray tones and my dark tones. I think they're kind of boring. Oh, I forgot stairs here. I'll put them in later. But I made room for a little bit of a patio out front. And then this this front area I'm envisioning to be like a, a front desk or some sort of greeting area for the steam engine. And in the back, of course, ignore the noise. I had to put up with this the entire time I was building this thing. So imagine how I feel. But we've got some safety railing and just some things to detail it and, then, and hide a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm not too worried about making this pretty because it's all industrial. Who cares anyway? And we have a catwalk up here just so people can walk around. But on the second floor... I also did not furnish this floor either, but I did lay out the rooms. We've got a bunch of random rooms and random shapes that are going to do, I'm sure, something for whoever lives here. And the person that I'm envisioning lives here is like the foreman who oversees the steam engine. And then it's got an attic as well. Woo! We love attics! And you're going to notice that I don't do a lot of uh, interior decorating. Walking back and forth between here and my main storage system is kind of a pain in the butt. And also... The, it, it takes a lot of resources and a lot of storage to do interior decorating, and it's just very, very time-consuming. So if, if I want to put these episodes out in a timely manner, I basically have to forego that until I can get interior decorating done a little bit faster. But right now, I, as long as I have a building up and things that I can, put, like rooms that I can put stuff inside of, that is absolutely perfect for me. So just a couple things to note during the montage, we got... Two skeleton horses, they spawned up here near my friend's base. Secondarily, while I was farming oak wood, we got some bees nests. So now we have three beehives, and even like one of them has three bees in it. Right here, I got I made a schematic before I started building. I made a schematic of the entire steam engine. So if we ever need more rotational force, we can just use a schematic cannon, which will be pretty nice. And now, if you look on our itinerary, we only have one thing left to do today, and that's the Oakwood Farm. And I'm not quite sure where to build it quite yet. I've been thinking about it while I was building, and the problem with this area is it's really hilly. It's just, there's a lot of hill. Yeah, there's there's just no flat ground basically anywhere at all, and I have to do a significant amount of terraforming to do anything. And to be honest with you, I may just flatten this entire island just to make it easier to build. I'm not quite sure yet. I gotta think on it. I'll bring you guys back in when I come to a conclusion. Well, you know, this spot doesn't seem so bad. It's not super hilly. I'll come through here with the mining machine. I'll just level it out, maybe lower it a couple blocks. And we'll bring it into level with this area right here. I probably want to bring it down to about... Maybe like right here-ish. Yeah, 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 this level. This level right here. So we'll bring it down. We'll bring down this entire island to about Y level 83. I'll just do this section right here. We'll lay out a foundation for an oak farm. Okay, I cleared out a pretty decently sized space for this. I don't think we need an oak farm to be any bigger than this, at least in the current time. Yeah, I'm back with a bunch of materials, so let's start planning out where we want this stuff to go. And I'm envisioning... This to be a sort of soft barrier, and I want there to be at least 10 lanes for oak trees. Eh, three off this block. One, two, three. Two hours later. I've got this contraption pretty much working 100%. It took a little bit of trial and error. I originally wanted to use gantry lines. The gantry lines did not work out well. They just kept getting stuck on everything. Trees go really randomly, and I didn't want to have to clear the leaves in front of the logs in order to harvest it. So I just went for a minecart contraption that sweeps on the bottom. And this seems to be working out really, really well. So I have on the back here a line of deployers just placing the saplings as this thing goes along, and there's saws that cut anything that's already chopped. And everything gets dropped off by this portable storage interface. They're doing the kissy kissy. I've got a line of goodies that I expect to get from oak trees. So this is everything that I think they drop. And this is the reason that I wanted to use Create, is because it actually, when it chops the trees, I'm stuck in oil. When it chops the trees, it actually does the drop table for all of the leaf blocks instead of just giving you some value of whatever it thinks it should get. So if we look at something 
something like that. If you want to get acorns, twigs, and green tea leaves, I think these are, then you need to actually despawn the leaves. You need to actually do leaf decay. In order to power this contraption, it doesn't really need much power. It basically just needs power to spin the belts because we have a contraption that's doing all the cutting and deploying. It doesn't, it doesn't use much stress units, but in order to power that thing, I've just got a line that's coming right down here and over in that direction it's pulling it directly off of our steam engine that's gonna do it for me for right now though i hope you guys enjoyed the episode we got a lot of progress done we made a nice building we got some good well this is our first like real automated farm and this is working out pretty nice all things considered so i hope you guys will stay tuned for next time i have some big beehive plans Bye bye